What's up, Meta Nerds? This video is all about the YM2800 Limpet Ship, a vehicle that started off as a mundane mining ship and became a badass boarding craft used by the elite forces of the Rebel Alliance. It was manufactured by Corellian Engineering Corporation, the creator of tons of freighters and capital ships, but also a wide array of mining vehicles like the Y8 and Garmin class. Brand knew this ship would cost you 150,000 credits, one credit more than the X-Wing, and two and a half times the cost of a TIE fighter. There are no dimensions for this ship, but in shots like this, you can see the Corellian style docking ring, and it seems to have the overall width of the Falcon. I think we can say that it was around 25 meters, or 82 feet wide, equal to about three and a half TIE fighters. Its height seems equal to an ATTE walker, which would make it around 10 meters, or 33 feet tall, about an Ewok on top of an ATST. And by taking the midpoint between the ATTE and the YT-1300, we get 28 meters, or 92 feet long, about two Wookiees longer than the Y-Wing. With a top atmospheric speed of 800 kilometers per hour, or 497 miles per hour, was slower than the TIE bomber, but faster than the HMP droid gunship. Speaking of which, this cockpit bears a striking resemblance to the droid gunship, but it could articulate, tucking in during space travel, and extending during mining operations, or when raiding Imperials. It appears like the medium laser cannons came stock, which might seem odd for a piece of mining equipment, but it could make a lot of sense, as you would still want the ability to blow apart asteroids, defend yourself from pirates that were trying to steal your newly mined resources, and it could just be like how dynamite is used by miners on Earth. For the same purpose, it had a plasma beam cutter, and for protection from the debris that this generated, as well as from all the other flying space debris, it had a relatively powerful heavy particle shield. It could transport six miners, while needing a six-man crew to run optimally, and could carry 125 tons of cargo, a weight equal to 31 banthas. You can see that its engine assembly was similar to the blue glowing line of ions seen in the Falcon, with the addition of this central thruster, and when it lands, it appears to take a couple steps, just like how the ATTE would when dropped off by the LAATC. We can see how there were two large thrusters on the ventral side as well, in order to get it and all that cargo off the ground, a job that was usually accomplished through repulsor lifts. And we can see in this image, that when docked, the cockpit was tucked upright, just like when it was in flight. As for its history, it was used frequently by the Rebel Alliance, specifically the Alliance Special Forces, during critical space ops. Ex-Clone Trooper Abel led a strike team that utilized the laser cutter to insert themselves right into the bridge of an Imperial cargo ship, gaining crucial assets that were needed for the survival of the Rebellion. This same tactic was used to gain resources from Imperial storehouses and many lightly escorted freighters, but it was even used during another daring assault on an Imperial 2 class frigate. In all, its only real flaws is that it didn't have your normal type of ray shielding, with that particle shield being necessary for blocking physical objects, meaning it didn't have to worry about space debris in battles, and was impenetrable from proton torpedoes or any sort of missiles, but it could not block the common laser cannon, point defense cannons, or turbo laser cannons that would make up the vast majority of incoming fire. But again, considering the role in which it was used, the heavy particle shield was amazing for covert ops units, as they weren't supposed to be getting into dogfights with other starfighters, and this shield allowed it to conceal itself in space trash, asteroid belts, or clusters of comets, places way too dangerous for your average starfighter. So that's it for its history, and the only cool behind the scenes facts are that limpet means to attach, and is a type of mollusk, which is why explosives that magnetically attach themselves to ships are called limpet mines. And this ship follows the Corellian naming convention, starting with the letter Y, with the YT, YV, YZ, and now YM series ships. And the YM appears in the Star Wars Rebellion comics, numbers 2, 3, 4, 5, and 11. So that's it for the YM 2800 Limpet ship, but most important of all, remember, one man's trash is another man's perfect hiding spot from which to launch a raid on Imperial ships, and the Force will be with you, always.